This month, America celebrates the 50th anniversary of both the Wilderness Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund. So I'm going to spend just a few minutes today, and I believe I'm going to be joined at various times by a number of colleagues, to talk about the important role that these two storied pieces of legislation have played in creating a legacy of protection and access to America's treasures. First, people may not remember, perhaps given the way some in the Congress talk about wilderness these days, but the Wilderness Act had an extraordinary, extraordinary bipartisan push behind it. It passed 73 to 12 in the United States Senate and 373 to 1 in the other body. And then the congressional champions included leading Democrats and Republicans of that time. To celebrate the successes of this landmark piece of legislation today, and it's the middle of Wilderness Week, I introduced a Senate resolution along with our colleague on the other side of the aisle, Senator Sessions, commemorating the 50th anniversary of the passage of the Wilderness Act. And just like the original bill, our bipartisan resolution has numerous co-sponsors and colleagues from both sides of the aisle. Now, part of the beauty of the Wilderness Act lies in the balance that was forged between immediately designating some places as wilderness in 1964 as part of the Act's enactment while providing a pathway for future designations. It's that balance, Madam President, that has helped to make the Wilderness Act one of our country's most democratic pieces of legislation in our rich history. By requiring future legislation, it compelled citizens activists to go out at the grassroots level to involve their friends and neighbors to seek permanent protection for the special places that were important to them. And while passing wilderness designations through Congress has been far from easy, the reward has been extraordinary. Since the act was signed, the Congress has designated more than 110 million acres of federal lands as wilderness. And each acre is a gift to our future from our past selves. Next to me, a few of those acres are in a photo of Mirror Lake and Mount Hood, part of the Mount Hood wilderness within the Mount Hood National Forest in my home state of Oregon. And Mount Hood, Madam President, is an Oregon you know, icon. Ava and William Wyden are twins, six years old, pictures available on my iPhone after this discussion. They ski there, and they've already recognized at a very young age that Mount Hood is an icon. And wilderness there and across America has been called the gold standard of conservation. Keeping areas under the strongest level of protection the law provides ensures that they remain wild for future generations to appreciate and enjoy. And by identifying what places deserve wilderness protection in an open, inclusive fashion, the country ensures full public debate, opportunities to bring people together to build a consensus, sensitivity to rural traditions and local economic needs, with an end product being wilderness areas that all Americans can be proud of. Creating wilderness, Madam President, and perhaps it is now Mr. President, creating wilderness is not just important for preservationists, it is also crucial for conservationists 
outdoor enthusiasts everywhere, and for all those who make a recreation economy hum, the outfitters and the guides and the lodges and the mom and pop diners. And the fact is that that recreation economy supports hundreds of thousands of jobs, hundreds of thousands of jobs in rural America and generates billions of dollars of economic activity across our country. That's also where the Land and Water Conservation Fund comes in, because it helps to secure and maintain public access to the country's public lands and wilderness areas for recreation and enjoyment. Now, also celebrating its 50th anniversary this month is the Land and Water Conservation Fund. This exceptionally important program is responsible, is responsible for protecting areas in all 50 states and our territories. And this includes such special places, iconic places, as the Grand Canyon National Park, many of our storied Civil War battlefields, and numerous national wildlife refuges. In my home state of Oregon, the fund has helped protect some of our most precious outdoor treasures, like the Columbia River Gorge National Scenic Area, Crater Lake National Park, the Pacific Crest Trail, and the Oregon Dunes. Equally important, the Land and Water Conservation Fund feeds state critical funds that help create and maintain the local parks, the trails, and the recreational facilities. Now, every year, the Treasury collects billions of dollars of revenue from offshore oil drilling and other sources of energy production. Out of that total, the Land and Water Conservation Fund is authorized to receive up to $900 million a year. It's, in my view, a balanced approach. It's a simple approach. It's a constructive approach to managing public lands with some of the money the country makes from extracting resources, taking that money and turning, around, turning it around and reinvesting it in the country's unique open spaces. Now, there are tremendous economic benefits to the investment the fund makes. Nationwide, 98% of our counties contain land protected by the fund, and in these places, America's outdoor recreation economy generates $646 billion in consumer spending and supports more than 6 million jobs. Few states, Mr. President, few states enjoy the outdoors more than Oregonians. It's almost as if, Mr. President, the outdoors is a part of our gene pool. We see ourselves as outdoors people, and outdoor recreation accounts for nearly $13 billion in consumer spending in our state, and it supports 141,000 Oregon jobs. As I mentioned before, in addition to its federal role, the Land and Water Conservation Fund helps the states. It provides matching grants so that state and local governments can use those funds to build new parks that are going to help struggling cities or towns develop. In the alternative, they can maintain natural spaces that are critical to the quality of life in those local communities. But the bottom line is those investments, Mr. President, federal, state, and local investments, they lead to job creation. We know that recreation opportunities drive tourism, especially in our counties where there's a significant amount of protected land. Those who are recreating, they go to the local restaurants, they go to the local shops, they stay in the hotels. Often they look for outfitters and guides. Economists note that job growth in rural western counties where there is a significant amount of protected land is four times faster than in areas where you do not have that measure of federal protection. Now, these are just some of the many reasons 
by failing to give the Land and Water Conservation Fund the resources it needs, in my view, would be nothing short of legislative malpractice. Unfortunately, despite the fact that 80% of Americans approve of the program's mission, it has been consistently underutilized, underappreciated, and yes, underfunded. As a result, jobs, growth, and protection, needed protection for these treasures is left behind. So Mr. President, I plan to introduce two bills this week that would help to secure the future of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. The first bill would provide a one-year extension of the Land and Water Conservation Fund. And the second bill, Mr. President, that I hope to be able to introduce here very shortly would make it permanent. Because I believe that dedicated, stable funding will ensure our public lands continue to be preserved and accessible to support those recreationists of the future, the conservationists of the future, and the local economic leaders of the future that will prosper as a result of those investments. In closing, Mr. President, I simply want to note that we celebrate the 50th anniversaries of the Wilderness Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund as millions of families across the country return from summer vacations to the parks and wilderness areas that these great laws have helped to preserve and enrich. And children everywhere are sharing stories in their schools about how they went fishing and they went hiking and they went camping in their nation's backyards. If realized to their greatest potential, the Wilderness Act and the Land and Water Conservation Fund are surefire ways to help guarantee that the next generation of Americans will continue to have access to beautiful recreation areas, captivating historic sites, and pristine wilderness. And strong, robust funding for the Land and Water Conservation Fund will help grow economies and create jobs in every state nationwide. Now, Mr. President, finally, let me note that until recently, I had uh, the honor of chairing the Energy and Natural Resources Committee. And as chair, I had the opportunity to work particularly with two colleagues that are on the floor now, the distinguished senator uh, from Colorado, Senator Udall, the distinguished senator from New Mexico, Senator uh, Heinrich. And it makes me feel very good that they are here because as Westerners, they see day in and day out that what we're talking about here with respect to the importance of this program and this extraordinary contribution it's made to, to the country, these two great Western leaders with respect to natural resources understand it's not just about the past. It's not just about the wonderful half century that I've taken the time to note. These are two leaders, Senator Udall in Colorado, Senator Heinrich in New Mexico, who I think are going to be part of the leadership, the leadership that works to protect these two great programs for years to come. So I'm very grateful to uh, have the opportunity to be on the floor uh, with, uh, with them. I've uh, had a chance particularly to uh, see some of the treasures in Colorado recently. I can see why uh, Senator Udall feels uh, so strongly about that. New Mexico is one of the few states I have not been, so I hope I'll be able to wangle an invitation to join uh, Senator Heinrich. But I want to leave uh, the floor knowing that as we make this commitment to doing all we can to make the protection of our extraordinary outdoor spaces part of the legacy we leave for our children and grandchildren, the case for these two programs and advocating for them is in very good hands with Senator Udall and Senator Heinrich. And with that, Mr. President, I yield the floor.